welcome to another episode of Small Talk. At the risk of repeating myself, I love doing this show. It has to be one of the best jobs ever. To sit with a guest, to find out what they do, where they've been, where they're going, it's all so fascinating and wonderful. Today, I get to have a conversation with Merlin Bunt. So, Merlin, I'm, I'm so glad you could make it today. Great to be here. I loved your bio. There was so much stuff in there. I mean, we won't be able to fit it all in because of time restraints, but um, let's just talk about the, at the beginning, you're from Chilliwack, right? Yes, I was born and raised here, born in 1953, and uh, lived in various Chilliwack streets and houses, Hazel Street, um, Lewis Avenue, Corbold Street, Hodgins, Brooks Avenue. Oh, I lived on Brooks, but why so many different locations? I don't know. We only bought one house. We kept renting. We had four kids, and I guess teachers don't get paid that much. Right. My dad was a school teacher, principal, but uh, we saw a lot of houses. Anyway, I had a great time being a child in Chilliwack, a, a young boy, if you will, just playing baseball and football and sports all day, uh, going to school. I went to Central School for my elementary, right. Chilliwack Junior High, which is now gone, and Chilliwack Senior High. And uh, I graduated in 1971, um, went to UBC, and got a degree in commerce. I have three siblings, uh, a brother, they're all in the police force, all in police enforcement. Right. My brother just retired as a Vancouver City policeman after 35 years. And I have two sisters who are in police enforcement in the administration support area. What do you do? What do you do? Uh, I am an accountant by training, okay. uh, CPA, and uh, I got that in 1980, and I'm also a writer-editor. I uh, edit professional documents and proposals. Could you give me an example of what those documents would be? Let, let's say you're a, a big uh, company, you want to build, build a hospital, you want to build a, a university. Right. Big, big projects, multi-million dollars, and you're an engineer or you're an architect. You're very bright, but you don't write that well because you're all about ideas and right. you're rushed. So they'll do a four or five hundred page proposal written by them. Right. It comes to us, to my, my client, who in turn get, comes to me and says, make sure it, it, it reads well and, and answers the question. So I see what's, what's asked for. I see what they've done. I say, you're short here. Well, that's good, but you're weak here. And I make sure it reads professionally. And uh, we've been doing it four or five years. And our clients win most of the proposals, so it must be paying off. <laughs> so I'm trying to wind that down because last year I turned 65. I want to retire the sooner the better. So I um, wind that part down. But I have another client. Uh, oh, I'm a financial advisor. Right. They're based in South Delta, and they manufacture high-end pillows and duvets for hotels and that sort of thing. And I am their financial consultant. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on retainer, if you will. Right. And it's a good job. I go there once or twice a month just mm. in person. It's all done remotely by a computer. Right. So that's my professional background. Well, how did you get to be to do something so different than from what your siblings do? I don't know. I was, <laughs> I was first born. Oh. When you're first born, you get more guidance and et cetera. So I, I was pretty, pretty law-abiding kid. I didn't break any rules. I did my homework. I, you know, I, I didn't. I did my studying. So, but early on, I, I, I enjoyed numbers. Um, when I was age nine, I started collecting baseball cards and mm -hmm. football cards and hockey cards, and I, I used to enjoy the, the statistics. And like baseball, ERA, batting average. Right. I would I would learn them, calculate them. So I, I, I like numbers. And then during school, I got A's in mathematics and that sort of thing. And then I just thought, um, well, I didn't graduate in accounting. I graduated in Atlanta economics. And I spent four years being a consultant doing glorified essays for land use okay. between Seattle, Alberta, and Vancouver. And then in 1980, my, there was a recession. And uh, I was working as a consultant doing land studies. And my next door, next office colleague was a bright fellow. He got let go. And I thought, holy cow, I'm next. I, I need a profession which can withstand recession. Right. And so I, I burned my bridges and became a CA student. My wife just finished um, her law school then, so she was working. So for two and a half years, I was just doing night school, exams, studying for nonstop. I got through first time, like half don't. It's really, well, okay. see, it's very tough going. Right. Anyway, so um, I became an accountant. All right. Yeah. Very good. Yes. Now, do you have children? I have three girls, three girls. 
and they're all lawyers. So two are in Los Angeles, one's a tax lawyer, one is a real estate lawyer, and one's in Vancouver, and okay. she is a, 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 a personal injury lawyer. We're gonna take a quick break, okay? Okay. We'll be right back, stay tuned. We're back, and I'm sitting here talking with Merlin Bunt. So, Merlin, I know you you moved away from Chilliwack, and then you returned, correct? Correct. I left in 1976 to start my career as an accountant, and uh, I was gone 42 years. Wow. That was a long time to be gone from your hometown. I came back last year, being August 2018. I just thought, I belong, I belong back here. I have friends here, my partner's here, uh, memories here. And um, I'm on two boards. I'm on the Chilliwack Museum Archives board as a director and treasurer. Okay. I'm also a, a lawn bowler. That's one of my new sports <laughs> hobbies. So I'm on the lawn bowling board and also a treasurer of that. My true hobby, I guess, is, is researching and writing Chilliwack's history. A um, little background. I came back in 2006 to see my parents. And I walked around town and I saw things had changed. There were buildings torn down, empty lots, boarded up buildings, etc. And uh, it made me sad because I have a great, a great memory of being a child here in Chilliwack. And it just, it just struck me. Um, my grandmother was born here in 1891 and she lived to be age 97. Right. And when I was busy in Vancouver, she tried to um, instill in me her, her uh, history spirit about mm -hmm. Chilliwack and I didn't have time being a father and working etc so it didn't quite take and now I regret that because she's gone I can't um, download. All that information that you could Oh she had yeah. so much Chilliwack memories yeah. but she died in 88 and she left me uh, books and letters and pictures which, which I, I just love anyway um, uh, I also enjoy writing, as I mentioned. So, yes. in, in I started writing some some summaries of what history, and I joined Facebook back in 2013. Finally, a, a late a late joiner. <laughs> I joined Facebook then, and you know it's great because you have all your friends there and all these pictures. But beyond that, there was a, a Chilliwack history group which appealed to me, and you can you know you, you exchange stories. So I did a few stories, and they were quite light, well liked. And I was asked to do more. Right. And also, I'm doing four or five different sites, a lot of work. Right. So I thought, I'll do my own page, my own site. So, in uh, September 2014, I created a page called Chilliwack History Perspectives on okay. Facebook. And it's got over, well over 3,000 followers, which nice. is very gratifying. And I've posted since, since 2014 about 120 articles on mm -hmm. Chilliwack people, places, events. That's my hobby. I try to post every Sunday morning, one a big story every two weeks and a small story every other week. So I can see in the future maybe doing a book. Oh, that would be nice. I've been asked to consider that by several people <laughs> and it takes time. Yes. I'm not quite there yet, but I can see it happening because uh, I've got a lot of good material which is original, which I've done and I think it's quite, quite well enjoyed. So. You see. That would be really good. No, I understand that some of the streets here in Chilliwack are named after your ancestors. Exactly. Uh, my great-great-grandfather was Isaac Kipp. He was the so-called father of Chilliwack. He oh. came here in 1862. And so you got Kipp Avenue. Right. His daughter, who's my great-grandmother, was, was Mary, Mary Street. Right. My great-uncle great is Edward Edward Street. Oh my goodness. Princess Avenue was yes. the nickname of my great great granddad's third daughter. Oh wow. Her name wow. was Alma. We call her Princess. Right. So there's a lot of, a lot of history in my family in Chilliwack. Um, and my grandparents lived over um, for a while over the corner of um, Edward and Spadina back in 1920s sort of thing. Right. So again a lot of memories here so that helps me be inspired to to you know research and write and document what happened in Chilliwack. Right, so, yeah. so when I'm gone, long gone, there'll be a record of how it was. Uh, be it big or small, there'll be a record of what happened with this building or this lot or this event. Right. And that gives me a little 
a little comfort. Do, do any of the buildings survive that your parents or your ancestors uh, lived in? Or uh, no, no, uh, no. They're all gone. They're all gone. They're all gone. Uh, it's a house now the corner of Edward and Spadina has the floorboards from the old house. I oh, know that, but wow. it's, it's redone. No, it's all gone. Um, my great my great grandmother died uh, a week before I was born, so I never saw her. She never saw me. Right. But she was born in 1866, and she was the first white child born in Chilliwack. The first white child? Yeah. Is that right? Eh? My great yeah, and her 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 daughter was my grandmother. Right. So that's how it links up. So, okay. Uh, Anyway, a lot, a lot of history, but I do enjoy writing about Chilliwack history because it's my hometown, and I like Chilliwack, and it's changing, but that's not a bad thing, but I want to I preserve on, on paper yeah. or what, how it was. Right. Oh, my goodness. This has been really fascinating. So we're definitely going to have to have you oh, on again. I'd love to, yeah. <laughs> well, we're out of time. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you here next time on Small Talk. In the meantime, peace out. You've got a story to tell. Sit down.